increasing the scale of production. So firstly, we should know the meaning of expansion. When you first started your business, you probably did a lot of research. You may have sought help from advisors. You may have gotten information from books, magazines and other readily available sources. You invested a lot in terms of money, time and sweat equity to get your business off the ground. So, now what? For those of you who have survived, start up and built successful businesses, you may be wondering how to take the next step and grow your business beyond its current status. There are numerous possibilities, some of which we will outline here. Choosing the proper one or ones for your business will depend on the type of business you own, your available resources and how much money, time and sweat equity you're willing to invest all over again. If you're ready to grow, we are ready to help. In brief, some of the methods are Open another location Franchisee Licensing Alliance Diversify Targeting Government contract Merger Expansion Technique But the most popular among them are Diversification Merger and Acquisition which we will discuss now. After studying this lesson, you should be able to analyze the concept of diversification, analyze the concept of mergers and acquisitions, compare vertical and horizontal expansion or integration, analyze the make or buy decisions. Now let's start discussion with diversification. Diversification is a form of corporate strategy for a company. It seeks to increase profitability through greater sales volume obtained from new products and new markets. Diversification can occur either at the business unit level or at the corporate level. The strategies of diversification can include internal development of new products or markets, acquisition of a firm, alliance with a complementary company, licensing of new technologies and distributing or importing a products line manufactured by another firm. Generally, the final strategy involves a combination of these options. This combination is determined in function of available opportunities and consistency with the objectives and the resources of the company. Diversification may be defensive or offensive. Defensive reasons may be spreading the risk of market contraction or being forced to diversify when current product or current market orientation seems to provide no further opportunities for growth. Offensive reasons may be conquering new positions, taking opportunities that promise greater profitability than expansion opportunities, or using retained cash that exceeds total expansion needs. There are two types of diversification, concentric and conglomerate. The concentric diversification specify that there exist similarities between the industries in terms of the technological standpoint. It is through this that the firm may compare and apply its technological know-how to an advantage. This is through a careful change or alteration in the marketing strategy performed by the business. This strategy aims to increase the market value of a particular product and therefore gain a higher profit. Related diversification again divides into backward, forward and horizontal integration. Backward integration is a move towards suppliers and raw materials in the same overall business. An example of this would be a brewer acquiring malting facilities or growing hops. Forward integration is a move towards the marketplace of customers in the same overall business. An example of this would be manufacturer acquiring retail outlets or a hop grower beginning to brew his own beer. Horizontal integration is a lateral move into a closely related business such as selling byproducts. Conglomerate or lateral diversification is where the company or business promotes products or services with no relation commercially 
or technologically to the existing products or services. However, still interest a number of customers. This type of diversification is unique to the current business and may prove quite risky. However, it may also prove very successful since it independently aims to improve on the profit the company accumulates with regards to the new product or service. Conglomerate diversification is where a firm diversifies into unrelated areas. It is the acquisition in no way related to a company's existing scope of operations. Conglomerate diversification has a number of advantages like business risk is scattered, better capital investment, stable profitability, shareholder wealth can be enhanced. Now let's discuss merger and acquisition. They are the general term used to refer to the consolidation of companies. A merger is a combination of two companies to form a new company, while an acquisition is the purchase of one company by another in which no new company is formed. When one company takes over another and clearly establishes itself as the new owner, the purchase is called acquisition. While a merger happens when two firms, often of about the same size, agree to go forward as a single new company rather than remain separately owned and operated. This kind of action is more precisely referred to as a merger of equals. Both company stocks are surrendered and new company stock is issued in its place. An example of a major merger is the merging of JDS, Fittle Inc. and Uniphase Corp. in 1999 to form JDS Uniphase. An example of a major acquisition is Manulife Financial Corporation's 2004 acquisition of John Hancock Financial Services, Inc. From the perspective of business structures, there is a whole host of different mergers. Here are a few types of mergers. Horizontal merger are those mergers when two companies that are in direct competition and share the same product lines and markets. Vertical merger includes merger of a customer and company or a supplier and company. Think of a cone supplier merging with an ice cream maker. Market extension merger includes two companies that sell the same products in different markets. Product extension merger includes two companies selling different but related products in the same market. Conglomeration means merger between two companies that have no common business areas. Like merger, acquisitions can also be of two types. A company at the same stage of the value chain. A company either further down the value chain to wholesalers and retailers, forward integration, or further up the supply chain to suppliers, backward integration. After this, the turn comes to discuss horizontal expansion. It is a corporate growth through the development or acquisition of business in the same line of products or services. For example, a cola company expands its product line by acquiring another soft drink manufacturer. Horizontal development is more about growth by expanding more of what you are currently doing, such as expanding manufacturing in other locations, creating more distribution outlets or expanding the territory, adding more stores, geographically expand or internal expansion creating greater and more diverse capacity and capability, more machines, more product, more locations, more warehousing capacity, more products, etc. Horizontal expansion tends to cut costs because the new products can be sold through the same distribution pipe or channels the company already has. It is of two types. Expand your already existing brand and go beyond your core activity. Providing job blogs also with blogs of tips to make money on our website. To create a completely new section of your company. Providing job blogs on more than one website. Now let's discuss vertical expansion. Vertical expansion is often referred to as vertical integration. Vertical development is following the natural chain of value-added commerce as follows. Importing or manufacturing, wholesale distribution, retail sales, 
direct sales to the consumer. Down the line of development, the natural flow of product from the original source to the end user through all the appropriate channels. Each channel is a vertical step. For larger companies, an example of vertical expansion could be to purchase or merge, hence the term vertical integration with the company that handles their logistics. In vertical expansion, Situations, clear separation between the stages are sometimes necessary as competing with their own customers and suppliers can be tricky as you expand vertically. However, it can be very successful if each layer of vertical development is operating independently and separate from each other. When expanding vertically, the curve of learning can be equally steep or even steeper because often it means that you will have to learn a completely new trade that you don't have any prior experience with whatsoever. Your already existing access to knowledge, whether it is in yourself or already employed people, should therefore be considered when considering either forms of expansion. The last topic for discussion is make or buy decision. The make or buy decision is the act of making a strategic choice between producing an item internally, in-house, or buying it externally from an outside supplier. The buy side of the decision also is referred to an outsourcing. Make or buy decisions usually arise when a firm that has developed a product or part or significantly modified a product or part is having trouble with current suppliers or has diminishing capacity or changing demand. Make or buy analysis is conducted at the strategic and operational level. Considerations that favor making a part within the organization are cost considerations, less expensive to make the part, desire to integrate plant operations, productive use of excess plant capacity to help absorb fixed overhead, using existing idle capacity, need to exert direct control over production and or quality, better quality control, design secrecy is required to protect proprietary technology, unreliable suppliers, no competent suppliers, desire to maintain a stable workforce in periods of declining sales, Quantity too small to interest a supplier. Control of lead time, transportation and warehousing costs. Greater assurance of continual supply. Provision of a second source. Political, social or environmental reasons. Union pressure. Emotion, x for example, pride. Factors that may influence firms to buy a part externally include Lack of expertise, supplier's research and specialized know-how exceeds that of the buyer. Cost considerations, less expensive to buy the item. Small volume requirements, limited production facilities or insufficient capacity. Desire to maintain a multiple source policy. Indirect managerial control considerations. Procurement and inventory considerations. Brand preference, item not essential to the firm's strategy. After considering and analyzing all these factors, we can decide whether we should produce by ourselves or outsource. Now let us check if we have understood the various concepts discussed in this lesson clearly. Horizontal expansion tends to cut costs. Right or wrong? Right. When one company takes over another and clearly establishes itself as the new owner, the purchase is called an acquisition. Right or wrong? Right. Vertical merger includes merger of a customer and a company. Right or wrong? Right. Merger and acquisition are synonyms for each other. Right or wrong? Wrong. Let's revise. Diversification means that the firms enter a new market with altogether new product. There is an underlying struggle for supremacy between the management capabilities of the organization and the discipline of market forces. 
market forces try to divide organizations into smaller entities so as to achieve the economists' ideal of a perfect market with a large number of small operators defenseless against the forces of competition. Diversification may be related or unrelated to the existing operations of the organization. Related diversification is called concentric diversification and unrelated diversification is called conglomerate diversification. A merger occurs when two companies, usually of similar size, combine their resources to form a new company. Acquisitions can either be for value creation or for value capture. Many of the acquisitions that took place in the 70s and 80s were based on the concept of value capture. Horizontal integration is the growth of a company at the same stage of the value chain. Horizontal integration uses the strategy of concentric diversification. Vertical integration is the combination of economic processes within the confines of a single organization. It reflects the decision of the firm to utilize internal transactions rather than market transactions to accomplish its economic purposes. The make or buy decision is the act of making a strategic choice between producing an item internally, in-house, or buying it externally from an outside supplier.